Hello, I'm Yan Yi from UCLA, and today I'd like to talk to you about the current progress on our development of a multimodal haptic feedback system for robotic surgical systems. I have uh, no conflict of interest to disclose. So first I'll talk a little bit about what is haptic feedback in general, and then I'll talk about the infrastructure of our CASID haptic feedback system, and then share with you the results of our validation trials and the challenges and future directions. So what's haptic feedback? It's generally understood as the sensation of touch. There are two types of haptic feedback. One is tactile feedback involving sensors in our epidermis, which uh, helps us sense fine sensations like vibrations, touch, texture, uh, whereas kinesthetic feedback involves um, sensors in our muscle tendons, which help us gauge grosser sensations, such as weight estimation, um, resistance, and proprioception. So currently on the Da Vinci, haptic, da Vinci surgical systems, there's near zero haptic feedback. For uh, robotic surgery, beginners, it's akin to operating with numb fingers. This can lead to slower, less accurate movements, excessive grip force, a higher likelihood of tissue damage, suture breakage, and inaccurate tissue characterization. So uh, at our own lab, we developed a um, fo force feedback system. Uh, the project started out as a military-funded um, project where we were trying to come up with a device that would help uh, uh, patients who has amputations get force signals from the bottom of their prosthesis to their thighs to help improve their gait. Um, applying the same principle, we try to detect force signals from the tips of robotic instruments and feed those as um, force signals to the tips of the surgeons. So there are three main components to the system. The first is the four sensors. We got these as commercial four sensors. We customize them by waterproofing them and then fitting them onto the robotic instruments using a, a custom 3D printed component. Subsequently, the signals were transmitted through uh, cables to a small microcontroller and then through Wi-Fi to a separate laptop. Um, and then on the laptop, we're able to monitor and process a signal in a real-time fashion. These four signals were then fed to the last part of the system, which is the actuators. The reason that our system is called a multimodal system is because there are three types of feedback that we can currently provide. The first is a tactile feedback, composing of little metrics or single balloons at the tips of the surgeon's fingertip. The second is a kinesthetic feedback, which is a pneumatic tubing, which is placed in between the finger pieces on the surgeon's console, uh, simulating the resistance felt between the jaws of the robotic instrument. And the third is a vibration motor, which gives a binary feedback, it, for example, as a warning signal when the force detected exceeds certain uh, preset threshold values. Um, it's kind of hard to imagine without uh, actually seeing the video. So here, here's a video demo of what the system looks like. We manually trimmed and waterproofed the TechScan FlexiForce piezo-resistive sensors before mounting them on the robotic end effectors with the help of a 3D printed mounting plate. The small footprint and rough surface of the sensors allow the robotic grasper to perform tasks such as pack transfers without hindering its original function. The force reading was sent to a microcontroller board, which then transmitted the data to a separate laptop that allows real-time plotting and visualization of the force signal. This was processed and transmitted to the tactile actuator. The actuators consist of pneumatic balloons and tubes that are also mounted on the Da Vinci console with the use of 3D printed mounting components. As force data was transmitted from the control system, the pneumatic balloons in contact with the surgeon's fingertips could then be inflated with various target pressures to reproduce the tactile sense of touch. All right, so that's what the system looks like. Um, next, I'm going to talk about what we did to um, test out what the system does uh, for, for our outcomes. So in basic LVET, FLS pack transfer test, we see that users who had haptic feedback were able to complete their task in shorter time with more accuracy. 
and then we did uh, we did a trial um, working on live pigs where we had the user run the small bowel, and so with haptic feedback, the grip force is significantly reduced, leading to less tissue damage. Subsequently, we tried to apply the same principle to other applications, such as trying to have surgeons detect the location of hidden soft tissue tumors that's not visible to, um, to the eyes, and this is something that, that wasn't possible without haptic feedback before. Uh, finally, we tried to add different modes of feedback and saw that with the addition of multimodal feedback, um, we got much more pronounced advantages. The prior described trials, we see that these benefits were all augmented when we add different modes of feedback together. So currently, our main challenge uh, involves uh, that the footprint of these sensors are still quite bulky, that they can, they can interfere with the dissection if we were to use it in human operations. And also, the location of these sensors, they differ based on the application. So I have to figure out the most versatile and parsimonious placement for the future. Um, future directions, so um, two main points that we found out during our development. One is that haptic feedback does matter. Uh, some people say that for experienced robotic surgeons, they're able to compensate with um, visual signals alone, but there are certain things such as tissue characterization and the learning curve for the beginners, those things are, those things both improve with the addition of haptic feedback. Uh, the second thing is that for surgeons nowadays with the, with the new technologies coming out, we're usually delegated to the role of consumers where we, we kind of use whatever industry provides us with. But um, with, our ex with our experiment, we saw that it's possible to come up with add-on components so that we get involved as designers instead of consumers alone, and we can come up with things that we think would help with our surgery. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hi, Dan Heron from Mount Sinai. It, it's a terrific presentation, very important work, and I think that even if you feel like you can competently do an operation without the haptic feedback, there's no question that if you add this, it's going to give you an added sense of, of uh, information, which is going to benefit the, yourself and the operation and your patient. My question to you is, uh, on your picture, it looks like the sensor was just on the grasping surfaces of the instrument. Obviously, there's a, lo a lot of other haptic feedback we'd be interested in, like whether uh, the, in the arm is hitting against the side of something or whether your arms are intersecting and hitting each other. And so my question is, uh, how many, in your, in your experience, which are the most important haptic feedbacks to return to the surgeon, and uh, do you have plans to uh, elaborate on more axes of motion, uh, giving more feedback. Yeah, so currently uh, that's one of, of, of the challenges that we face is that depending on, on what we're trying to do, if we're trying to minimize dissection forces, then we place the sensors on the outside of the grasper, whereas if we're trying to reduce grip force, then we put it inside the jaws. We have yet to find out what is most relevant to each surgical task. Um, so that we don't like keep switching sensor position for different purposes. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs>